Hello everyone, time for a stream, and yes, I've had a shave. It's well needed. So today, we're going to unbox the HPI Venture Scale Builders Kit, which I'm looking forward to. Marita's joined us, hello Marita. And Cage is with us too, hello Mac, how's things alright? Good, lovely. I did send out some shares. Hopefully we get some people getting off their bum and joining in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, we'll give it a few minutes for those guys to rock up. Um, in the meantime, I this morning started tinkering with the Range Rover body. Now, rest assured, once this is all finished, it's not going to sit this high. I'm going to put 100 mil tyres on it, um, drop it down, Mickey Mouse. So far, so good. Um, the instructions for the body on this these kits are okay. They're not brilliant. They're okay. Um, Probably the biggest issue. Ugh. Yes, it's me, Dennis. It's me, mate. So yes, I've been starting to construct the body so that I can suss out how I'm going to go about painting it and all these sorts of fun things. Um, and also how it's going to mount. Now, these body kits do actually come with a mount kit for the SCX-10 and the TRX-4. So I've got two options. Um... Uh, Angus has joined us. Hello, Angus. I'm keen to see the venture close up. I haven't seen one close up yet. Me too. I haven't either. I've got the box sitting just here. We're going to rip in. Um, so yes, I've been I've been playing with this and getting the body sort of together so I can um, get an idea of what it's going to be like to, to paint and build. I want to also suss out what I can get away with, if that makes sense. So can I can I build it and paint it so that I paint the roof separately? paint the whole body, then paint the black window surrounds, all those sorts of things, and then put the roof on later. So that's why I've gone ahead and started constructing some of this first, to get a good idea of exactly how I'm going to have to build the body to make it cooperate, if that makes sense. Um, a lot of bolts. Stupid amount of nuts and bolts for this body. It's crazy. Allow me to sit that to the side. Day. This can also sit to the side. That's a brilliant kit. I'm pumped to get that thing out on the trails. Adam's joined us. Hello, Adam. If you want to get an idea of the amount of nuts and bolts that are included with that bloody um, extra speed body, get feast your peepers on those, would you? <laughs> They're all for that body. So are they. So. Cray cray. As the kids would say. Any words as to whether this new company can save HPI? I kind of hope so. I hope the secret company go under. No idea. I haven't been following what HPI have done lately. Um, don't know. I've got no idea. From what I've seen of people driving the HPI, etc., they seem to like it, which is awesome. Um, I'm, I'm pretty pumped up to build this kit. See what it's like. Uh, as long as you paint it, it'll turn out well. You always put the uh, put the needed time in. I do my best, man. Like, I'm still up in the air as to what colour it's going to be, what the story behind it's going to be, and all those sorts of things. But, look, I'm sure in given time, I'll come up with something. I mean, as, as much as I'd love to camel it, I'm sort of, uh, I've already got a camel, and I've got the old Range Rover body that I might camel to, so I don't know. Brian Potts has joined us. Hello, Brian. How's things, mate? Um, so I'd sort of, I don't know. Um, and there's also the... If if I go to mount it on the extra speed chassis and the interior is not going to work properly with it, do I mount it on the TRX4? Adam Ryan, good to see you're not bashing this product. Well, I only bash what's worth bashing, mate. Plain and simple. Um, so if I can't mount that body on the T on the on the SCX10 chassis um, and have the interior work properly, then I'll maybe mount it to the the Bronco. Tear X4 and then put the Bronco body on that chassis. So that's an option. As I mean, I, I sort of hate to take the I hate to take the Bronco body off um, the Bronco because it's a snap on one and that, that means something to me. Johnny Hoiberg's joined us. Hello, mate. Now things, mate. Good. Hope you're well. So we're going to rip in. Um, I managed to school this kit from Oz RC, local, local, it's a hobby shop in Queensland. 
they had a few of these kits left and they were selling them cheap, 250 bucks. So I think I got the last one and I figured it's that cheap, I might as well buy it. So, so you reckon I'll do a build series with this venture uh, and then give it, do a giveaway with it. I reckon, I, I don't know, I probably will. I've got enough trucks as it is, so I may just build it, smash a nice wheels on it, nice body, um, do up some scale gear for it, and then do a giveaway with it. So who knows? I'll suss that out. But yes, HPI Venture Scale Builders Kit, all metal drivetrain, or all metal gear drivetrain. So that's good. Uh, axle weights. This does come with axle weights, doesn't it? It does. Uh, what else have we got? Behind the axle steering. Or is that both? Appears to be both. Optional four link. Adjustable wheelbase from 290 to 315. Uh, aluminum, uh, aluminum threaded shock bodies. Nice. Uh, RC cars. I just bought that kit. Nice. What do you think of it, mate? What do you think? Um, from what I've seen in the Venture stuff, it all seems pretty, pretty good to me. I've not seen... Um, a whole lot of complaints about it, so I figured, bugger it, let's um, let's find out, eh? Let's find out. Oh, and there is a big um, I when I say I have enough trucks, Adam, what I mean is there's more I want. <laughs> want and need are two completely different things. I don't need any more trucks, but I want more. Please relocate the battery. I can see why you'd say that. I wonder if I could... That transmission makes it a bit tricky to... I could possibly, Brian, make a battery tray that goes across the chassis just behind the motor mount. That, that could be a thing. I can see there's two spare holes in the chassis where we could bolt it to. I reckon I can do that. So... I can make that. We've got the actual Rubicon body. Planning on making it, uh, making it for U4 RC. Nice, dude. Nice. So I reckon, Brian. I reckon I can make the battery sit behind the transmission. So it's not, it's not directly behind the shock towers, but it is across the chassis and a lot further forward. I mean, I've, this is sitting right at the back. So. Uh, I was told you have to be after an aftermarket battery tray. So obviously someone already makes one. I'm borderline surprised these guys don't make their own. Basically a flat plate. I'll see what I can design. Alright. Oh, dude. What a champion. Let's get a close up on this. Guy from Oz RC. I said, dude, if you can, if you've got any. Come on, camera. What are you doing? Shoot me some decals. So he's dropped some decals in the box for me. That's awesome. We're going to go straight on the scale garage. Pumped. Like, oh, there's lots of decals. All right, so if we do a build and we uh, and we give it away, then we'll smash a couple of Oz RC decals on it because the dude was pretty good. I can't remember his name. <laughs> dude was pretty good. I said, here's the money. Send me the truck. Here's my address. And he sent it out. I think I paid for it on the, in an afternoon like a up past five six o'clock and he posted out the very next morning and it got here about three days later so that was wicked um all you Aussies out there go and check out Oz RC uh Mr Foster's joining us hello David working on my FR4 RTR nice nice Dennis uh I'm gonna do it again in a few weeks gonna get 3D printed 80s F150 body uh F150 body in 12.3 inch wheelbase nice what body you putting on it I've literally no idea. I haven't thought that far ahead. It was just, oh, cheap kit, buy it. It's a bad habit, mate. That's <laughs> that's how you end up with a lot of trucks that aren't finished. Okay. As I say, some good deals on roller chassis occasionally. I've been noticing, Adam, on Facebook lately, as I see, are pumping up some big deals on everything. It's just they're constantly trying to clear out stock so they can get new stock all the time. So. Follow, go and follow their page. Say so you've seen it on the stream. Um, go and follow their page and keep your eye on the deals that come up because there's been some crackers lately. Like, I mean, these kits for 250 bucks, anyone's going to buy one. That's like a dollar fifty American. All right, so 
we just first bag bag G this has got our skid plates uh, shock hoops the battery tray etc what if I could just relocate that uh, it's a bit of a weird show anyway let's crack it right have a look at the bits at the pieces Sturdy plastics. Snap! <laughs> <laughs> uh, plastics feel pretty good. They don't feel too cheap. They don't feel nasty. They look good quality. You, uh, who's popped up there? Uh, Adam, I watched them on eBay. Nice. Uh, I said, cars, I had the Vanquish in my hands and this was next to it on the shelf. 200 or 750 I took the $200 one. I can understand that, mate. I can. That, that feels pretty nice, that plastic. It's... For those that don't know, sometimes you can, um, as soon as you touch a piece of plastic, you know what the quality is like. There's there's a few different trucks, the old HSP stuff and um, a few other trucks out there. As soon as you touch the plastic, you instantly feel the graininess of it and just, it doesn't feel like quality gear. This actually feels really nice, which is good. It's just hopefully a sign of good things to come. No idea what that piece is. Shock hoops. Okay, plain and simple shock hoop. I do wish, and this may be me being picky, I do wish it had more shock mount options. Because by the looks of things, we only have one. Come on, camera, what are you doing today, mate? We only have one um, one real option. You could possibly do two, but that may go through and hit the, the body post. Other than that, the plastic feels... The plastic feels really rigid, which I like. Like, that's barely moving at all. Andrew, oh, heck, is that a shave? Yep. All that crap on my face was giving me the shits. Mr. Magnet, oh my God, pretty sure the shave was not the doctor's order. No, it wasn't. It was my own. <laughs> okay. Yes, I've had a shave. Robert's joined us. Hello, Robert. How's things, mate? All right, good, wicked, lovely. Some sort of brace of some kind. That's possibly to do with the battery tray. Yeah, it is nice. I like that. I mean, I, we've already we've already talked about um, moving the battery tray, and that's just because it's right at the back of the truck. That was suggested by Brian. But I like the fact that it's got its own little locker system. I like that. That's good. That shows that it's a well thought out little design. Stuff like that, so you can see. You've got, you put a, a bolt through there, I imagine, or some form of pin. You've got your own little locker system which goes in there. I like that. I like a well thought out truck. I don't like, I don't like paying for something and then go, well, why is this done like this? Why is that done like that? Dennis, uh, I've had a HPI and found their plastic is about on par with Traxxas. It feels about the same, mate, to me. It, it feels really nice. Anyone that tells you Traxxas plastic's crap doesn't know what they're talking about. Plastic, the plastics from Traxxas is bloody brilliant. That's why you can smash it, slash into anything, and not very often you break it. Uh, right, so we're done. That's another. That's the rear shock hoop. Was the other one a rear or a front? That was a front. That's a rear. So the rear has three mount positions. Three mount positions on there, which is good. Um, I would like to perhaps see, and this is again just me being me being a little bit picky. Do a bit of a drop down. They could have another three. You know what I mean? And they could possibly have a, another loop up with another three above it and that gives you nine options um, to mount your shocks simple little things but I mean let's face it this is what you would class a, as a budget kit so I'm not going to complain too much about stuff like that uh, is it plastic or that uh, Durland stuff it just looks like plastic to me mate I don't know if it's Durland I would have assumed that would have been a feature that was set on the bag if it was something out of the ordinaries right bag of bolts we're not going to worry about opening those because it is what it is it's a bag of bolts they are allen bolts uh, a dog bone and i'm going to go ahead and assume that's possibly a pan hard mount in in metal uh already on mainstream so i'm assuming that's a pan hard mount and then we've got a dog -a boner all right that's i assume going to go from our gearbox through to the uh, center transmission uh Built materials are tied with it. What do you mean, mate? Built materials are tied with the element. So far, and I'm not taking the piss because people get sooky, the plastics on this are tenfold better than what's in the element truck. Tenfold. 
Uh, Mike, shop keys. Yep, that's an option. Um, I mean, you're there designing the part. It takes two seconds. Just drop a few extra holes. In it. That's just my, my mindset. Angus, I haven't broken anything in my slash apart from the axles, and I'm pretty good at crashing it. <laughs> Tractors plastics are tougher than I expected. Totally agree, mate. My old slash, man, I put that through some shite. It wasn't until I went... I caught the corner of a curb, and I caught it with the front left wheel, and the truck literally just stopped instantly, lifted up and span in one, like in the one spot, and it was like, that's a biggie. It cost me ten dollars to fix it. You comment on Traxxas plastic. You've confused me now, Adam. Did you mean you mean about the if people say Traxxas plastic shit, they don't know what they're talking about? Because Traxxas plastic is bloody good. So. We'll do the skid and then we'll skip the rest of the bits in the bag because the one generic black plastic, like we've already we've already sussed out it. It feels like it's pretty damn good quality stuff, which is good. There's our skid. Now here we go. All the Gen 8 boys are gonna love this. Oh no, it's got a bump in the middle. Ah, oh, better redesign one that's flat so that doesn't get caught on everything. <laughs> Wait for it. <laughs> um, I mean it's. It's a skid plate. It looks very similar to an SCX-10 skid plate, which it probably is. Mount, mounting holes are different. It's longer, which is good. It's not an SCX-10 skid plate. It is very similar, though. That's your, your I won't say standard, but standard style SCX-10 skid plate. Pretty similar design, but you get to the point where there's only, only so many different ways you can design some of these parts, and then what can you do? Uh, damn comment delay. Nothing I can do about that, unfortunately, mate. Uh, so it's eventually going to be a Raptor, a Defender, or a Yoda. It won't be a Yoda. I'm not a fan of Toyotas. Um, never liked how the seating position is. That's just me. Um, I don't know, man. It depends. Like, I've got the truck pretty cheap, so I could possibly look at sticking one of the um, extra speed Raptor bodies on. That could be an option. Uh, you're 80 degrees, mate, said. A TRX4 an element of retiring quality. I mean, come on, man. Unsub. <laughs> Learn to drive. Oh, I was just, it was my fault, Mike. I was being a penis when I, when I smashed my slash. Sounds like Angus needs a bit a couple of lessons, though. I've done that in my loss. He snapped the bulkhead in half, cost me $36 from the US, and I had to buy two months. <laughs> uh, Dennis had a 2x4 slash. Got slammed into the walls of the racetrack. Sandwiched between another truck and a pole. They even ran over by a Cadillac and it survived. Wayne says, yes, go the Raptor. I do like the Raptor body, Wayne. The only problem is, if I make a really nice Raptor, I might want to keep it. And if that's the case, I'll have to buy another one of these to do a gift like with it. So I've got to try not to build a truck that I really like. Otherwise, I'm going to have to buy another one to give away. <clears throat> but like I say, it, it, it came up at a cheap price, so I just... That's what I said to you guys. Do you want to see what I'm boxing? And you're like, yeah, sweet, I'll buy it. I didn't even think about it. That would be epic. Very few people can pull off a scale Raptor. I do like a Raptor. Right, so that's our bag of generic plastic to start with. Oh, look, another bag of generic plastic. We're going to open it up now with Sticky B. Uh, not wrong about needing driving lessons. Oh, you were talking about the, the bump on the skid. I couldn't agree more, Mike. A little bump on the skid, the Gen 8's the same. It's a tiny little thing. Um, and people are, ah, oh, gets caught up on everything. Mate, are you purposely trying to catch it on stuff? Because I've not got mine stuck at all. Uh, Andrew, wait, wait, wait. Is that the Venture Builders kit? Yes. Yes, it is. Uh, I looked through the SBK manual and didn't like the build sequence. Step one, build the diff. <laughs> uh, it could be worse. Step one, build the links. Ugh, I hate building links. Step two, build the shocks. I hate building shocks too. Um, I like bolting stuff straight to the chassis, man. That's the fun bit, because then you actually see what, you know, I'm getting somewhere. It looks like a truck now. When you're just sitting there for two hours building wheels, links, and shocks, and then you diff, it's like, oh, God. It's not until you start actually hitting the truck with a few of these bits, it looks like something, you get excited about it. Right, so we're going to have a look at the sliders. Are you going? Alright, so here's our rock sliders. A little bit bendy. Not too bad. 
Not a bad design. I mean, it's a, it's a plastic slider. It is what it is. It's not going to be anything crazy fancy, but again, same quality plastics. I don't mind the plastic. I like the feel of the plastic. Enduro Step 1, it's a chassis. Not replacing it. Whoa! Settle down, fellas. I'm having a joke. Body pins. Straight as a die. I'm joking. Settle down. <laughs> they're reasonably flimsy. That could be a bit... These could be a bit stiffer. I don't like... I mean, you guys know. I don't like a body post that's too bloody... Too easily bent. But, they're, they're straight. And that's good. What else have we got in there? Some form of mount dearly. That takes a body post. Is that for a tall body? That must be for a tall body, I reckon. I reckon so. so that's for a tall body. Apparently, Adam's dropping bombs. <laughs> uh, I say, I totally agree. Uh, I normally build, I normally rebuild everything if it comes assembled anyway. Yeah, I do too. Long links, hate building links. Um, bending is a good thing in a rollover. Yeah, it is, but I mean, you need to have a bit of stiffness there too. Uh, does it come with full metal bearings and metal gears? I know it's got metal gears. It said that on the box. I don't know about bearings. We'll see. I, I can see a bearing now, but we'll see as we go through it. you got to remember, this was only 250 Australian dollars, which, for you guys playing at home, uh, wipe that off there, uh, wipe that off there. Google's, 250. Uh, Oz to US. 170 US dollars ish depending on the conversion rate at the time so you guys let me know from the guys from the states would you class that as a bloody cheap buy I didn't say anything not PG uh, there must be something that it's assuming is a bad word Adam I don't know it's an automatic thing I don't control it unfortunately uh, what's the last bit in this bag here Drive shafts, plastic. Okay, I found something I don't like. I don't like plastic drive shafts on anything, but it is what it is. Like I said, the cheap's the cheap's kit, uh, the cheap's kit. Okay, the kit's also cheap as well. Um, so it is what it is. I mean, you can spend twenty bucks get a set of metal drive shafts that'll take ninety nine percent of the shit you're gonna throw it anyway. So yeah, plastic drive shafts. Just never been a fan. Currently our dollar is in the toilet. Yes, it is. I'd buy it for that, says Uncaged. It's cheap, man. And that's why I just couldn't help myself. If something comes up cheap, I'd buy it. Bad habit, terrible habit. <laughs> terrible habit. So, oh, God damn, that's cheap. Sold! Uh, and we've got our bumper man in there as well. That's the same. Jesus, that's stiff. Same quality plastics as the, as the rest of it, which is good. The drive shafts are chunky, I will say that. So I don't think, unless you go smashing a stupid big brush that's set up in it that you don't need, I, you're not going to go breaking them anytime soon. Additional parts. Body pins. Black body pins. Awesome. I love that they're black. One, two, three, four. It looks like there's six or eight. If there's eight in there, that's epic. It means nothing to some people. I like black body pins. Yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six... Seven, eight, it almost looks like there's nine, but we'll say there's eight, which is awesome. So you get four spares, which means I can put four on this truck and four in my drawer of many things for some other truck that needs them. And then we've got more more nuts and bolts and fun stuff. Um, also, the wheel nuts in there too, which are black, which is good. Uh, Brian, yep, that's how I bought the Asia T's tent trailer. It comes up cheap, man, you just got to. Uh, Adam, I try to give all stock parts a chance. I do as well. Um, that's why. With the PG4 that I'm building now, just putting it all together stock. Um, I ran mine stock for a while with no issues, and then I just sort of upgraded it because I like bolting new shiny bits on my truck. So this current one I'm building, I'm just going to leave stock, and that's what I'm going to do with it. I'm just going to leave the drive shafts in it, stock motor. I'll say that now. I'll probably change that to a year racing motor, but um, apart from the year racing motor, I'm just going to drive it as it's meant to be. 
Mr. Foster, yep, never pass up a good deal whether you need it or not. Yep. Uh, Mike shows one ninety nine for us. So that's what you'd normally cost you, Mike, two hundred bucks, which is still a pretty good price, if I'm honest. You know, for a crawler kit, and I mean, you're going to put your electrics in it anyway, so still a decent price, I reckon so. I reckon so. Next bag, links, metal links. Let's have a quick sticky peek at these bad boys. And why can't enter the giveaway? You can enter any giveaway you want, mate. Doesn't matter how many trucks you got. Doesn't matter if you've already got one. You enter it anyway. All right, metal links. So there's, that's going to be our pan hardened steering. They're actually reasonably small, those ones. These are our our links. They're all labelled as to how how long they are, which is good. It makes it easy for people to set them up. They're actually quite nice looking links. Let me get one out. It's little things like this, right, that I like. You can see there, there's a little flat spot on that link. So that's so you can grab it with your screwdriver to make your... Um, so you can grab it with your uh, bloody thing and stuff. Your pliers, for when you're doing your rod ends up and such. I wish this camera had cooperated a bit more. Let me change the setting here, peoples. Let me change the bloody setting, because that's irritating the creepy enemy. I can't remember if I turned autofocus off. Can we get rid of you? Let's go there. Let's go there. We'll turn auto focus off. <clears throat> okay, so you can see it's got the flat spot there, top and bottom, so you can grab it with your pliers to help you do it up. And it's got the numbers on there so that you don't cock up which one goes where, which is good. And they look nice. I like the colour of them. Uh, nice metal links, which is good. Uh, please be metal ball links too. I will let you know. Spent my allowance on the trailer. <laughs> What's an allowance? Uh. Put a 6.5 in it and trash it for one battery. And if those stock parts hold up, they're pretty decent. I could do that, but then it'd be more like they'll break. Then I'll have to replace them, even if I'm not giving them away. Um, these are the... I won't get this out of the bag. These are the, from what I can tell, the pan-hardened steering link. They're pretty damn thin. They're pretty thin. I'm guessing that's what they are anyway. That's what they look to be. So we've got those. Ball ends. Plastic. Wah. Please don't do this, companies. Please don't put them. They feel heavy, though. They look plastic. They are metal. They are metal ball ends. Awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So that's good to know. That's That makes me happy. That can go back in the box so I don't lose them. And then, of course, plastic rod ends. We know stranger to these and then our uh, grub bolts for the rod ends and the links so they're simple to build links which is good I hate links that are a pain in the ass bag D alright hopefully this will answer some questions people have ok bag D has numerous bags in it who keeps pestering me who wants something pal uh, you, you, right. Is that one? Of the, that can't be one of the shocks. No, what's that for? I'll have to look in the manual. All right, metal gears. Lovely, lovely. Looks like this truck's got a slipper. Looks like. Uh, D bag. No. If you can, if you could have just chucked the bags towards a magnet, I could have told you if they were metal. <laughs> uh, I'm going to assume that's gearbox gears. There is a ball bearing in there, which is good. Hopefully, as we dive deeper into the, the depths of these bags, we see more. More plastic bits. Uh, that looks like our transmission housing. Our is that metal? I want to see if the motor mount's metal. No, it's plastic. Bugger. 
just another little piece I'd like to see um, in metal. Just again, that's just my preference. All right. That's that's our receiver box and ESC tray would be my guess. ESC goes here, receiver in here. Run your wires back and forwards. Nice. So what about the frame rails? Patience, my friend. Patience. I can tell you they're not they're not placey. Um, I like that. That's a that's one of those well thought out things. So if you're running a 1080, that's going to sit on there nicely, and then you can just. Let's tuck all your wires in there. Receiver box is a decent size, so you'll fit a decent um, a decent receiver in there should you want to go multiple, multiple channels. I don't mind that. I don't mind it. So there's our, re our receiver box. Again, this is all stuff that's open to um, interpretation with your 3D printer should you want to design some stuff. Right, and then we've got our typical gearboxy housing stuff. The gearbox actually looks smaller than I was expecting. I thought it was going to be bigger than that. Which is good. Then we have our servo mount. Hard plastic. Very hard. That's also part of the chassis mount as well. Now I prefer a metal motor mount. This plastic tends to flex under torque. Yep. And they can warp with the heats and all that sort of fun stuff too. So uh, metal's less prone to do it because it disperses heat better. That's uh, for a simple design mount. That is actually quite strong. Even the part across here, where there's only two little bits of plastic holding it, that's actually quite bloody strong. Which is good. I'm happy about the plastics. Right, let me throw those back in there. So so far, as far as a quality check goes, seems pretty damn good for the money. I see Scrap Garage. Hello, I'm back. Home sweet home. Greetings from Norway. I oh, don't sound like I'm from Norway. Greetings from Norway <laughs> to everyone there. Thank you very much, my friends. Pleasure to have you join us. It's always a pleasure to have Pal join us. Been a member of BCRC for a long time. Interesting. We were just talking about metal motor mounts. We have here what appears to be a metal motor mount. Well, I never. We're looking at something on the box here. Okay, yep. I'll see how it works. It's a metal motor mount, the other plastic piece goes on the other side. Okay, good, good, good. This truck's doing pretty well so far for the money. Bloody well, actually. Uh, Dennis, hey, at least hard uh, plastic comes in the box and is in the higher dollar upgrade. Yep. It's, um... I wanted to buy Avenger when it came out. I don't know why I never did. And looking at... Looking at what the kit's like, I'm sure the kit's got a couple of extra goodies in the, the RTR, but... Looking at what the kit's like, looks like a pretty legit, pretty legit truck. So I guess the big question is, why aren't there more out there? I know you see the odd one. I can literally, I can count the number of people I know with the Venture on one hand. Well, before we did this stream, and anyone in the stream said that they've got one, or they've got a kit. Jason Hall is the only bloke I know with a adventure. Why? Because you guys know I'm a, I'm a stickler for value for money. It's got to be good value for money or it's not worth buying. This kit's value for money. I really, I'm really quite impressed so far. Metal motor mount. Uh, more, more bearings. Someone asked earlier about the bearings, more bolts, grub screws, all that fun sort of stuff. So we do have bearings everywhere. I'm yet to see any bushes. More, so it's bearings throughout, which is good. That there may be one bush. Maybe. I don't, obviously, I don't know where it goes yet, so it might not be too. Chunky metal gears. <laughs> Chunky. Uh, I thought it was brave. Move for 
and it's released really Adventure as a FJ Cruiser. Lots of people love it. I'm not a fan. I've got a CCO one FJ Cruiser. Let's try to finish building that. Andrew, nothing against the Toyota, but hot down the FJ is an ugly beast. <laughs> so there's our let's close up cam just to mix it up a bit. There's our our gears. Check those out for Chucky Mothers. Hey Chucky. All the all the gears in this truck are, are weighty. They they look quality, they feel quality. No one saw that. Um, so far I'm impressed with this truck. Come back over here, kid. All the gears are metal. Bearings throughout. The plastic quality is good. Metal links. Why aren't, why don't more people own this truck? You guys are going to have to try and explain this one to me because I don't get it. How much did the Venture cost when it came out as an RTI? Uh, I think everyone is scared they will go away and nobody will have parts. There's enough aftermarket companies out there that make parts for all these trucks now, but that's not a huge issue, I don't think. Surprising amount of parts in this very thin box. Bag B. Apparently someone outside decided it's a good time now to do some whipper snipping. Weed whacking. All right, diff casings. What have we got there? The lockers. Yep, diff gears. More bearings. Good. I like too. It seems that everything is bagged. Three forty nine. Now, we're not taking the piss. All right, we're not. Promise. I promise. You guys, let me know in the chat. And in the comments too, if you watch this after you know, it's uploaded to YouTube. Let me know in the chat, what would you buy? The Venture? Or the Enduro? Because I'd buy the, the Venture every day of the week. And this is just going by the quality of the parts and how well thought out the truck is. And I know the Venture body's good. They kept pushing back their release date and Axial beat them to it. Still, I mean, we've, there's a lot of competition out there. It's not like Axial was the only one out there flogging trucks. The biggest error Hatchco always did was the E10 chassis. <laughs> Dennis said he'd buy the Venture. I'm curious to know what... Brian said he'd buy the Enduro. Have you got a... You've got a Venture, Brian, did you say? You have got one, because you said about the battery tray. Which you real? All right, more metal pieces, brass pieces. I don't think the brass came with the with the factory truck. Axle shafts, more bolts, a couple of brass upgrades for the diff. Metal hexes, that's good. More metal, metal diff case, that's good. There's more metal on this truck than I expected it to be. Mike had big hype here when it released, but it just didn't happen for them. I remember seeing them release videos and such of. Um, had one, okay, and you'd stick, you'd honestly buy the enduro for the same money. Can I ask why? And I'm just curious, because I mean, you, you guys know I've, I've unboxed them here, and I'm looking at them, and I know this is not an RTR, but it gives me a pretty good idea of what the RTR is all about. And Andrew, well, HPI been around for a lot longer. I've got spares and hop ups every time. Yes, come on, Andrew. Uh, is doubling down on the enduro for aftermarket parts. All the companies out there that make aftermarket parts just try and beat everyone else, and it's just what they do. There's a lot of times where a company's better off saying, you know what, we're going to skip truck A, and we're going to do parts for truck B because not many people are doing parts for that truck. They're going to make more money making parts for truck B because, well, everyone else is doing part truck A anyway, so... But you can't tell some people. Um... Yeah, I see what you're saying, Andrew. I'm just surprised, that's all, because it seems... It seems like a really well-thought-out truck, and the, the materials are good. I mean, even things like the metal hexes. and Did the RTR have metal hexes? 
and the metal diff covers and all that stuff all they plastic I'm just a little surprised right so we have diff gears in there we've got our we've got a little brass upgrades there for the diff which is good you don't have to put that in but they did anyway our axles probably be a touch thicker but it is what it is uh, both need heaps of help but chassis layout is killer do you mean the chassis layout which one would you say the chassis layout's better in I do like how this is set up with the forward motor mount and separated trans so that yours had plastic oh, the RTR had plastic wheel hexes okay interesting interesting diff case let's check out one of these bad boys shall we if I was buying a bash crawler yeah, we're not talking about bashes we're talking about if you just if you had if you had 350 US dollars in your pocket and you went to the shop and there was there was two trucks to choose from because everything else had sold out would you buy the HPI or would you buy the Enduro Diff case is pretty dang strong. I like that it's got a small pumpkin. I do like that. Center of gravity is way better. There's, there's probably a reason why the center of gravity is better in the Enduro, Brian, and I think a lot of that's due to the body weighs nothing because it's paper thin. Even as silly as it sounds, the plastic being so thin and so little of it is going to help um, lower it too. The stock tires were bad. I don't even know what they looked like. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm borderline tempted now to hunt down a bloody uh, Arteo. As dumb as that might might sound to people, I I rate this this kit. Uh, HPI's financial problems scared people away. I can understand that too. I can. I like the I like the small pumpkins. I mean that they're not blind three piece differential well three piece yeah three piece for the, the main diff and the covers and then you've got your, your lockouts and sea hubs etc where are the shock mounts on these tiny little truss on top Okey dokes Okey dokes that mounts up there nice and small oh. The, the design, this is just my opinion of course, the design of the parts of this truck are nicer than the Enduro. Like the, even the, the little, the link truss and stuff for the diff, it's small, it's out of the way, it's not a wanky big thing. It's about $50 difference between the Enduro and the Venture. The Venture, uh, the, the Venture is the dearer, but I think I'll still go the Venture. I thought they were the same sort of price. Uh, are the reversible the diffs are they reversible you mean these if there's a lot of stuff with well this kit's discontinued uncaged I wouldn't be surprised I think it's a bit of a shame because there's a, especially if you can get it at a good price there's a lot of good value for money in this kit I reckon Honestly, what do we expect to replace on RTR servos, wheels, and tyres? It all depends on which one you buy. So it's and it, I know I'm going to cop shit for saying this too, but um, the, the cross RTR. When I took that out, I was really quite surprised. I know the tyres are good because I run them on other trucks. Um, the wheels, I'd replace those because they're just they're plastic. The body, love the body. It's just up my like. The servo actually was pretty good. It was the best servo out of the FR4, the Gen 8, and the Enduro. The JIT was. Uh, now it's cheaper. Uh, now it's cheaper than you. They were the same. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. I'm loving the fact that we're having an adult conversation here. And no one in the chat's having a big beep and teary about it. Alright? It's good. It's lovely. But I'll leave it for the comments once it's uploaded to YouTube. You watch. Anywho. Just to shut down us up, let's have a look at the chassis rails. Yep, metal. Which you'd expect. Uh, 
All right. Beefy. Beefy is the, the first word I'd use. I do have a little bit of flex, but I mean, you're going to get that when you bend in the chassis roll that way. When you, if you do test bends like this, don't do it too hard because once it bows, that's it. You need new ones. Plain and simple, you're going to need new ones. But C rails, as you'd expect. I mean, there's, there's chassis rails. There's, there's not too much. You, you can't really cop those up, can you? As long as they're metal, and they don't even have to be C stamp rails. As long as they're metal. Shut up, Dennis. Bloody kick you out of chat, mate. What are you doing? Johnny, uh, on my Wraith, I replaced loads even before I rolled it once. you got to roll it at least once before you replace stuff. Uh, just because you are wrong doesn't make me right or the other way around. Well, <laughs> lots of people like to tell me I'm wrong, Brian. Lots of people. I mean, I know this. I, I guarantee you there's some parts on that Enduro that I pointed out that people that bought them went, okay, I'll pay that. You know, stuff like the axles. It's as simple as all they had to do was put a washer on the bolt. A little shim. A little shim on the bolt. And then no one's got to stress about axles falling out. Little stuff like that. There must have been people out there that bought the truck and went, I might just take the wheels off my truck. I probably should do that. Uh, please check the difference. In the wheel arches, uh, the difference in the wheel arches. You mean like in this to see if they're, they're, they're the same? I can't find that builder's kit on RC Mart though. It's probably not. Oz RC was where I got it from, Andrew, because they had it cheap. They had it cheap for sale. Let me do a quick Google and we'll see if see if there's anywhere that's got these kits in stock. Uh, my brain will work. Uh, and your build is kit. If we're dealing with RTR prices, I think the Enduro is around five seventy, and the uh, Venture is around five ninety. Oz RC was selling an Enduro for five thirty the other day, just to get rid of it. <laughs> Pretty bad, isn't it? Uh, oh, do you want to see if the frames are the same? I can't do that right now. They don't look the same to me. Uh, HPI. Metro Hobbies. Have they got them in stock? If we can find a kit for you guys cheap to go and buy. Uh, let's go. Builder's kit. $340. I can see why you've still got it in stock. $340 is too expensive for this kit. In my opinion. It's a nice kit, but I wouldn't pay that much money for it. I'll pay more for the venture, so no loss there. Well, I mean, what it comes down to as well is, and this is this is all down to whether who agrees with me and who doesn't, and that's fine. But from what I've seen here, without looking at the body, um, this has better quality parts than the Enduro. Uh, how much are theirs? 359 Jesus no one of them still got them in stock too okay so it turns out I got this damn th this thing pretty damn cheap it's on eBay for 200 US dollars so if you want to you want to get it off eBay that's all I'm finding <clears throat> um, I'll hold them up against it Brian and have a look suss it out all kids are fun for me Every brand uh, engineer their cars differently. Why is it interesting to see multiple ways to solve a problem? That's all well and good, RC cars. My, I guess my biggest issue with, with any company is if they... Like if I build this kit and there's certain parts that are just dumb. Or... Uh, when I say dumb, I mean it's like it's not thought out at all. It's just like, oh, that'll do. Just put it on the truck. That sort of stuff shouldn't exist. Not this day and age. When you've got so many companies out there building trucks, it should be, this part goes here for a very good reason, and that's why it's there. Like, and it's the whole, it's the whole hard plastic thing. I know a lot of people are sick of hearing it, but the whole hard plastic thing with the Enduro was one of those things. Why don't you just put the hard plastic parts on the truck anyway, really? 
I'm sure anyone out there that owns an Enduro would prefer it came with the hard plastic parts instead of soft plastic, and then they release the hard plastic. But let's move on. Chassis rails feel nice and strong. The chassis rails, like I said, you can't screw those up too much, really. You can't. Yeah. And they look to be perfectly identical either side. You have to have a certain amount of stiffness in your truck because if you don't, your suspension won't work as it's supposed to. If you tune your suspension on the bench, right? And then you go and drive your truck and the chassis is flexing too much. Your suspension's not working as it was tuned to work. Brian, yeah, I've bought a few. So have you bought... You've bought the hard plastic upgrades, Brian. And I'm, I'm not taking the piss, obviously. And, and this is a big thing. You guys in the BCRC community have to understand everything and anything I say about any truck is because I care about what you spend your money on. Um, I'm curious, Brian, what did you buy... Why and how much did it cost you? While you do that, let's move on to the next bag. Let's look at a few bags. Three bags to go. And then we'll go to our instruction book and stuff. Uh, Johnny, when I see shop in Stockholm, returned all bar one that they managed to sell in Euro, that is. They didn't even sell, even with 30% off. Uh, a couple? No, no, I understand. Good, I'm glad. And this, Brian and I have had a few conversations about the Enduro, and every time <laughs> every time we finish, we're like, how are we still friends? We've just talked about the Enduro, and we didn't rip each other's face off. <laughs> Magnet, I just ordered a plastic chassis truck so I can take it into the salt water and it won't rust. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, survey mount. And skid. How much difference did the servo mount make to the body rigidity, Brian? Just out of curiosity. And why didn't you get the BCRC one, mate? What are you What are you doing? Uh, the opinion spur chart in the middle of the manual is kind of confusing. Be interesting to see what electronics you put in there. Uh, it'll be a year racing twenty kilo servo. It'll be a year racing. Uh, Motor, no doubt. Um, I'm going to have to order more of those. 25 ish. So that's about 40 Australian dollars. I'm joking. Um, yeah, so in this truck, it will most likely have a year racing, um, probably a 16 turn motor, uh, the Hobby Wing 1060 or 1080, and the year racing 20 kilo servo. Uh, Dennis, I have to say, the body in the SU4C helps the frame by stiffening it up. Well, it will. It's a full hard body. But, I mean, honestly, pff, there's not a whole lot of movement in those Demon frames. Johnny, I like the style of the body on it, though. I'm sure, uh, I'm sure it's a good truck with upgrades and such. Uh, in the rear. BCRC wasn't available. When did you buy Oh, you probably bought it straight away. Whoops. I would suggest, Brian, you check out that rear mid brace. Makes a big difference. Just that one that one brace. But then I would follow it up with the, the shock brace too because that's pretty good. <laughs> anyway. Next bag. I'm getting so, so I'm going to have a swig of my coffee. Did I miss anything? Had to get a part off the printer. Not really, Dave. Not Dave, Ben. Not really, mate. We're just, um... Talking trucks. We're just talking trucks. Alright, so a shock bag. Comes with shock oil. Awesome. That's good. Our shock housings. We'll get one of these out so you can check it out. Ooh, I like that. I'm, I'm loving some of the colours that these companies are putting on these parts now. Like, you guys aren't seeing that. There you go. That gives you a bit of an idea. I really like that colour. It's quite nice. Dare Triple Shot is nice too. I haven't tried it. I have to try it. I like that. 
I do wish the and again this is just one of those little personal preference things um, I do wish the thread on the shocks was a bit finer just to give me that ever so slight adjustment because it does make a difference uh, Dennis, Brian, I still can't stomach having to buy hard plastic upgrades rather than aluminum, steel or brass I mean obviously you can buy the brass and and such uh, Brian, please everyone, keep in mind I like my Viterra too <laughs> Let me get a bit more comfortable here My back's not been good lately and every time I see a doctor he makes it worse Bastards but machine quality on this is phenomenal. Phenomenal, phenomenal. I like that. I really quite do. And like I said, I like the colour. Little things. But I like the colour of the links. I like the colour of the, the shockers. The shock bodies. They're quite nice. Machined nicely, which is good. And then it's a bit of a letdown. <laughs> and again, this is personal preference. I'm sure there's guys out there that will agree with me, guys that disagree. But we've just gone from that gorgeous... From that gorgeous shock body that is metal isn't it feels like it's metal they did say metals it's metal thought it was it's just very light um dennis viterra wasn't nearly as bad as the enduro i don't like viterras but i did say i would personally buy a viterra over a enduro so that gives you guys some sort of <laughs> anyway so we've gone from this this gorgeous shock body to all the parts that go around that are plastic I feel like they've missed a boat there and I mean I know it's a cheap kit but I wish it had metal shock tops I wish it had metal caps for the bottom of the shock I wish it had metal adjusters I, lo I don't mind a plastic um, middle spring retainer so you got spring spring retainer in the middle I don't mind a plastic one because there's less noise if it's touching the shock but the caps I don't like in plastic the bottom caps I don't like in plastic we'll see how well it goes together um, the spring retainers actually don't look too bad either for the for the bottom so that's that's good now obviously we're doing it we're doing an unboxing I'm, I'm running my eyes over stuff and giving you guys my opinion um, once I've built the kit, I'm going to do the full blown. Is it any good? I'll, I'll whack up a set of wheels on it. I'll sit up the bench. We'll run through the shocks and see how they all feel. I will use their oil. Um, I don't. I don't know how many. What weight it is. Apparently, it's leaked in the bag. <laughs> oh yeah. Anyway. Apparently it's leaked in the bag. Why is it whenever I do a live stream? People have to be noisy shits. Um, but I'm gonna I'm gonna run that and I'll set the shocks up exactly the same way as I do all my other shocks. Um, so that way my test is fair across the board. So we've got our we've got our housings, we've got our the extra plastic bits, and then we've got our a typical O-rings and all the other bits and bobs for your shocks, which is fine. Let me just plop all that back in this bag. Uh, Mike, I like my Viteras. That's good. And that's the main thing. You, you've got to like them. Now, 30 weight would probably be the normal in most kits. You'd hope so, because 30 weight's probably... I mean, I run 30 in all of my trucks. It's just... It seems to be just a really good... A really good middle ground for nice scale... Um, nice scale bounce, especially in slow motion. Nice scale bounce and really good performance. More plastic drive shafts, we're not going to get too much into those. The ends are metal though, which is good. And even the little stuff, like the the ends of the drive shafts have got HPI racing on it. You know, they've taken, they've taken pride in making this stuff. I just, I, I, I just wish there was more of them about, if I'm honest. Well, I've never had an issue with driven my SP4 to major... Uh, la, 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 la. I don't like the skid or the trans. Mate, I fixed that. Just get my skid plate. In saying that, I've never I've never once in any of my demons ever been caught up on the skid. Um, but if, if you want to change your skid, Brian, got your back, mate. Got your back. 
See again, yes, they're our rear drive shafts. We know this because they're longer. I oh, know they're going to be because we had other ones before that were shorter. So we use a combination of the two to make the shorter or longer wheelbase. So and that's what I'm guesstimating. Um, so I would assume you've got enough parts in here to change the wheelbase to either of the, I think, 290 to 315, which is a pretty good range. Um, either of those, any of those settings to, to suit your needs, as it were. The last bag. Chris Jones just built one of those kits. What did you think, Chris? Did you like it? I picked this one up cheap. 250 Australian dollars. Picked this one up cheap. Um, and honestly, I, I don't see why more people don't have them. Uh, which is saying aluminum set of training guns would be good for my Yeti XL. It's an absolute monster. Uh, that can break itself. It's nice to have, sometimes with, with bashers, Dennis, you're better off having a bit of movement and all that sort of stuff, because if you've got a rigid part, it's got nowhere to go, it just breaks. So, I mean, that's up to you, man. It all depends on how you, just how hard you drive it. Brian, I love the truck, it just works. Awesome. I do like your SP4, Brian, it looks really nice. SP4's on my list, I've got to get one. Um, there is going to be a all going to plan all going to plan there's going to be a unboxing coming up soon that hopefully will be a, I won't say a world first but the first unboxing of this truck in the world all going to plan like I've never had a problem with the trans and the demon uh, and get the skid makes a huge difference um um, look, I've put the skid on my SU4. I've, I've got to take it out and drive it. Uh, yes, I got mine for 250 as well. Uh, as well, had no real issues with the build. Did you get yours from Oz RC, mate? Because that's where I got mine. It was a good bloke. Shipped her out real bloody quick. Right. More diff gears, more bearings. Awesome. So there's no bushings. It's just bearing everywhere. Uh, more body pins. What are they? Spare hardware. This stuff, okay. This stuff. This is the second company I've seen do this. Cross does it. They give you a gift bag. I love Cross gift bags. There's more body. There's another four body post. Uh, body pins in here, which is awesome. So we now got twelve body pins in black. We we'll sound dumb to lots of people, and I don't really care. But I've got, I've got two more trucks with a body pin sitting around now in black which is I love that and then there's some spare bolts and some e-clips and a couple of grub screws which is awesome that's a good spare spare parts bag I like it when a company says you know what here have a little bit extra just in case steering arm that's probably the worst looking part of the whole truck and I'll show you what I mean uh, Jared that's his name Yes, as I say, Jared's man. Awesome. Brian, I'll definitely buy another. Good. Alright. This is the worst thing I've seen on the truck. And this is funny. It's like when we unboxed the, um, the TFL. Such a brilliant truck. Oh my god, the parts on it. Just fantastic. And then there was the drive shaft. And it was like... Do they install, you know, do they put those in the box Friday? Because it just looked like, compared to the rest of the truck, no one cared. And this is what this part looks like. This is our, this is our steering arm. Look at the, look at the finish on that bad boy, fellas. I'm sure you guys can see what I mean there. I'll get a bit of a different light hit on it for you. Okay. Why is that... This looks like it's been pulled off a truck that's been driven for six months. I mean, I don't get that. I know I could give it a quick sand back, hit it with some plastic dip or some um, some black paint or something just to tidy it up, but I shouldn't have to. That doesn't make sense. When when you look at everything else, the plastics, brilliant. The 
the, the metal pieces look good quality the bearings the bearings are bearings RC companies just go to a, another company and say how much for this many bearings of this size and this size and this size let's do the best deal we can if you can do the best deal for me I'll buy your bearings and that's how it works um, regardless of what company it is so bearings eh, if you want nice bearings take them all out and change them okay plague bearings are good uh, I think Fast Eddie um, does bearings I mean there's bearings everywhere but it's got them and that's that's the main thing um, it's a nice looking kit man just scale rust and it's borderline it borderline looks like it's starting to get surface rust on it which like I say it's just weird everything else in the kit has been spot on it looks brand new it looks shiny you can almost smell the newness and then you go this has been outside someone's used this what truck did this come off <laughs> you know what I mean it just doesn't make sense for the for what I paid for the kit 250 Australian dollars it was beeping cheap I reckon it looks like a really nice kit I'm excited to build it I'm excited to to run it and see what it goes like again I've got no idea exactly what I'm doing with it <laughs> no idea at all I know I'm building it pre-weathered it's just like it's it's sweated inside the bag I'm sweated sweat whatever a bit hard for you guys to see it but it looks like it's sweat inside the bag and the, the protective coating is literally just rubbed off in the bag uh, is that link still looks like no further work after heating and bending yeah, it is it is Adam spray it with some protective coat boys that's all you gotta do that's all you gotta do bit of mask and tape either end <laughs> done that's simple but anyway uh, other than that what have we got left our instruction book now I'm gonna quickly just to tidy up my desk because I'm sick of my desk being just covered in RC parts I mean, I'm not sick of it, but it gets hard to work on other stuff when you've got different multiple trucks in the way. Let's just stuff all this in here. Shouldn't have to. I shouldn't have to paint stuff like that. That, that should be that should be done for me. I shouldn't have to do it. When I was saying about the mask and tape, Brian, I didn't mean me. I meant them. <laughs> I meant HPI. Like, smash the mask and tape on it, boys, and paint it. So when I get it, it's Mickey Mouse. Because I shouldn't have to paint it. That's what I meant. Because as you guys know... Well, I just cut that. Anyway, <clears throat> as you guys know, in my opinion, when you buy something and it's shiny new, that's exactly how it should turn up. So, as it is at the moment... The only thing I can fault is that steering arm, I think. Was there anything else I said? Everything else seems... It's got it's got bearings. Uh, chassis rolls are nice. Plastic quality. It looks and feels really good. Um, metal ball ends. Metal shock caps. Are the shock accessories. The, the shock caps. Um, the shock adjuster. And the, the bottom and stuff are plastic, which I really wish they were metal. Um... There's, there's not too much wrong with this kit, especially if, if you can get one this cheap, buy it. Buy it. Brian, oops, missed that part. Gotta be quick round here, mate. <laughs> decals. Love that it comes with de decals. Um, I just wish there was a bit more variety. But it's fine. It is what it is. The... The decal sheet, in my opinion, and this is going to this is going to trigger some people in the audience. The decal sheet was the best part of the enduro for me. <laughs> the decal sheet was spot on. It's good, good stuff. Um, this is all. I mean, I'm glad they give you decals. I think it's a bit of a must. A lot of people are proud to rep the company that they're driving the trucks from, so it's nice that they can do that. I just wish there was a few little scale scale decals, and that sort of shows that the company is about that that side of the hobby it's not just let's make a truck and sell it it's we love scale stuff scale builders kit scale decals please again it's just me being picky 
Plastic shock bits. Yeah, I did mention that. Uh, warranty stuff. Ooh, the kit cars. Now go to all the uh, all the w's dot racing dot com. What do we get with our? There's a there's a card here, fellas. Does it do anything good for us? Register your kit now, and you'll go uh, get specific video guides for your kit. Keep up to date with the latest option parts for your kit. <laughs> Find HPI events near you. Oh. Wow. Find your nearest HPI service centre or hobby store. Plus, you can win free prizes. Remove your kit card and keep it safe. I'm going to go ahead and assume there's not a whole lot of this going on anymore. <laughs> has anyone, has anyone used this and signed up and did the thing? Did they get? Did you find your nearest service centre? <laughs> did you find your nearest HPI service centre? I love the, I love the excitement behind it and the idea. I don't see a lot of people using it. Stream should still be there, fellas. It's working for me. Maybe try a refresh. I'm still here. I'm just writing in chat. Hit refresh. I wonder if it started a new one. That'd be shit. It's back here. Awesome. We're still going. So, wasn't me. Just did. Seems to have worked. Awesome. No idea, fellas. Put it on YouTube. The, the chat's been delayed for the last few streams, so we can put it on that. Uh, Mr. Blue Vein, mate, what, how long have you been here for? That's the first comment I've seen. Screw you, Optus. Optus of penises. Um, it's a massive lag now. Seems fine on my end, man. Like, I'm sweet. Yeah. <clears throat> I'll, I'll do a scene change. So we can refresh the chats and all that sort of stuff. That should reload. But I didn't go anywhere. My little green box is still green. So I'll watch this back later and see how far in are we. 1 and 18. I'll see if there's any issues. So anyway, maybe it was when I held this up it didn't like it. And last but not least, boys and girls... The manual. It's working for me. Seems to be working fine for everyone now. I don't know what happened. Maybe it had a two second blank out. Okay. Now a lot of you guys know. And the reason I'm doing this. I'm a, I'm a fan of a, if, if the manual feels good. Generally speaking what's inside the kit feels good. Okay. This manual actually doesn't feel very nice. Timberwolf, I'm about five minutes behind. <laughs> Hit refresh, mate. Refresh your stream, my friend. But anyway, let's have a look in the book see. Once we do this book, we're pretty well done for the day anyway, so don't stress too much. If you miss something, go back and watch the last half hour. You'll be fine. Okay, overview. Awesome. You'll need battery. You'll need receiver, battery charger, motor, servo, all that fun stuff. The tools you will need. It is 30 weight oil that comes with it. So well done, whoever it was that said 30 weight. Uh, Brian, it was me. I was talking too much. Probably was. Streamlabs would have had a go at you though, Brian. It seems to be pretty quick. <laughs> Stage one. Build the dips. <laughs> Stage two. Build the steering arms and shits. And you've even got to build the axles yourself. Okay. That'll be fun. Still, it is what it is. So far, the instructions look pretty straightforward. Is the paper cheap? 
The paper inside the book's not, but the paper on the outside just feels really not very nice. I know that means nothing to some people, but you grab a cross book and it's just like such a good feeling book. It's nice and smooth and this is the one you can sand your hands on. Anyway, so it's got the bulk sizes there, yes. But the instructions are pretty, pretty um, <clears throat> minimalistic. Okay, it gives you a rough idea. I would like to see, like Cross does, um, Tamiya does it too, down the side of the page. These are the parts you need for this particular step. You can hold the bolt up to the page and go, oh, that's the size. <clears throat> I know there's some spots here where you can do that, but it's just me being, it's just me being a bit finicky. My oil was loose in the bag with a spare bottle. My oil is half in the bottle and half in the bag, Chris. <laughs> <coughs> so, but anyway, can I say open bag C, open bag D, so that's good, I like that. All right. Adjusting the slipper clutch. Slippery, loosen, smooth power delivery. So at least it tells you what you're doing. Do, 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 do. Okay, okay, I see. So Adam, I'm out. Catch you later. No worries, mate. Thanks for stopping by. I'm about to shut up shop anyway. But I just want to have a quick flick through this book to suss out how the transmission sort of goes together and and whatnots. Overall, overall, I'm quite impressed. Um, especially if you can get one cheap, get it because the quality is definitely there. Um, for the most part, the design of the, the kit looks good. I'm really, really quite impressed with that. I'm, I'm glad I bought it, which is good. So if you can get the venture cheap enough, it passes my tests. I don't know, that might mean nothing to some people, but um, I mean I know Chris Chris got one from the same place I did. We done well, Chris. I think we did, we got a good deal, mate. Even if you just you just smack whatever legs and body you want on it for that money, that's good. Uh, how did you got the doctors? Just the same shit, mate. You go and see, it was a different specialist because my normal specialist is away on holidays, as he always is. Uh, so I seen another specialist that just did the same sort of checkup that I had bloody when I first went and seen the current specialist. You know, I had to, I, I can't drive a car very long without being in a lot of pain. Um, Hannah drove me to the doctors yesterday and Bip and Danny killed my back. Um, because apparently this time it was in town which is a pain in the ass because it's about 45 minutes up the road and that just my back doesn't agree with that um, most of my appointments we try and do locally so it's only 5-10 minutes away but this one was in the middle of town which was just shitful um, so yeah it's looking like we've got to do some more scans a die scan and all this sort of stuff to see what what parts of my back's doing what and all this shit so I've lost some weight though. That's been good. That's been a positive. It's um, it's easy to gain weight when you can't do anything. All you do is, I spent the first six months of being injured, lying on the couch, not being able to do anything. So I mean, you're just lying there eating, basically. Um, and then the next six months, well, it's, there wasn't sort of much I could do. <clears throat> um, but yeah, over the last last few months, I've actually I think I've lost four four and a half kilos so Chris says bloody hell that is a great deal sorry look I'm sorry if there's a delay with any of the comments there's nothing I can do about it it's, it's all YouTube um, but yes Chris I think we did bloody well mate so given it looks like these are discontinued if you like a hobby shop or something's got one and you want it don't pay the sticker price you say look let's be real the truck's been discontinued you can't buy it anymore you know you can't buy it anywhere anymore do me a deal make me feel like I'm getting a deal and I'll buy it cash ready to go and 99% of the shops out there will 
work with you and say, screw it, we'll knock 20, 30 bucks off. And you go, sweet, thanks, mate. And you get a good deal. Um, I've seen it advertised in two places. Um, two places online in Australia. One was 339 It's too much money. The next one was 359 There's a reason those guys still have those kits. Um, 300 bucks or under, I reckon. 300 or under. But it is. it does appear to be a pretty nice kit. If it had the inner fenders and all that sort of thing, I'd probably go up to... Um, go up to as far as 330, 340. That's just my opinion. But other than that, it looks a really nice kit, and I'm, I'm, I'm honestly glad I got it. So, and I get to see what the Venture's actually like. Um, who knows? I might even buy a Venture body and put on it. They're probably not very expensive. Uh, you probably don't realise how much you do with your back. Trust me, yeah. <laughs> Even sitting here doing streams, before I do a live stream, I smash a cup of Nurofen, right? <clears throat> I smash a cup of Nurofen, and then when I finish the stream, I'm stuck on the couch for hours, because it takes that long to recover from sitting here doing a live stream. And I'm noticing lately, I used to be able to stream for like two hours, and then I'd have to stop. I'm noticing lately, I'm getting to about now, and when I move in certain directions, you'll see me go, Ooh, and move a little twitch. That's my back saying, you're pushing your luck and it's getting worse which is really frustrating <clears throat> so not fun um, right just quickly before we go let me have a look at the uh, HPI FJ cruiser on eBay Okay, so if I want to buy the truck Artia, I can get it for $449. Free post. The the Enduro is 570 I'd buy the Venture every other week. Honestly. Now what I was laughing at to start with was the first thing that came up was HPI... Cruiser body, $110. And what I hate to say is, that's from Oz RC. It's painted, and it's got the roof rack on it. I don't know if that makes it worth a bazillion dollars more, but... I'm not paying $110 for an extra body, man. Plus $18 post. The post is, the postage is reasonable enough. But... Shop around, I guess. Anyway, Ooh. all right. Well, I'm Johnny, and that's been the unboxing of the HPI Venture Scale Builders Kit. Seems like a pretty good truck. Um, obviously, it seems like more and more places now are doing discounts on it, so if you can get one cheap, get one, because that, that's a nice kit. In my personal opinion, that's all it is. If you don't like it, that's fine. The quality of this truck is far better than the Enduro, far better than the Gen 8. Um, it's on par with the cross stuff um, which is good I'm, you guys know I rate cross stuff and if you don't like that well tough shit um, it, it's on it's on par the, the materials are nice it's, it seems to be thought out well obviously I'll find out more when I build it but so far I like it if you can get it for a good price buy one um, once I build it we'll whack it back on the bench um and we'll do a what was it like to build and then after I drive it I'll do a video with running footage saying this is exactly what the kit was like this is what I've put in it this is how I've set it up I'm going to build it as factory as possible so that you guys can get the best idea of what it is actually like and whether it's worth spending your money on alright well thank you very much for watching um, feel free to uh, to bloody subscribe <laughs> give, a, give the stream a like we've had According to the view count, 19 people the whole time, which has been good. Um, give it a like, give it a share. If you wish to wish to do a donation towards our um, towards our gold truck, we want to give away a Cross RC SU4C next. Um, there's a link in the description below. It would be epic if you could help us out with that. Uh, yeah, the price of bodies has gone wacko. How much is the Dodge um, Ram Charger? 
That'd be a nice body to put on. That's a bit different. Dear eBay, please don't hurt me. <laughs> Proline bodies aren't cheap though. Uh, Proline, RAM, charger. Switch. Nothing found. <laughs> Custom painted. This isn't. This is an old Dodge body. Custom painted Dodge fifteen hundred Ram body for one ten. One hundred and sixteen dollars. It's painted red and black. It's like it's not. Would you guys pay? $180 US. Would you pay that, guys? To me, that seems a bit dumb. It's not going to focus. A bit steep. But anyway, I'll find the body. Alright, well, thank you very much, guys, for watching. I really do appreciate it. Um, no idea when the next stream will be. I'm sure it won't be too far away. Don't forget to join Burton's Custom RC Builds. Um, if you want to stay up to date with streams, uh, unboxings, there's some pretty good ones coming up. Um, the giveaways and all those sorts of things. So, <clears throat> Magnet, catch you next time. Smash the like button. Good on you, mate. Much appreciated. You guys are champions. All right. Take care. Have fun with the hobby of RC, and we shall see you on the next BCRC live stream.